Hello, 5 Minute Friday number 32, and in today's episode, we're going to fix a broken 3D print head. Regular watchers will know that I recently bought an Up Mini 2 3D printer, and for about four hours print time, which is about 250 grams of filament, I developed a blocked print head, which is a little disappointing, but perhaps it could be some kind of setting, like maybe having the nozzle height too close to the bed. So anyway, there's generally five reasons that a print head can get blocked, and I'm gonna go through those, and hopefully it's gonna be the easiest one. So the thing to check first is, is the drive gear blocked? Now the drive gear is some kind of hobbed bolt or a little serrated tooth in there that's driven by the stepper motor. Stepper motor turns, grabs filament, drags it through. Now over time, this little gear can get clogged up with all kinds of dust and shredded filament, and it could just be a case of cleaning it out because the dust is mean that it can't grab onto the filament well enough. So that is your best case scenario because it's dead easy to fix. The next thing to check is the stepper motor itself. Is the stepper motor turning? If it is, is it driving the gear? If not, then it could just be something as simple as tightening up a little grub screw that's holding it on. If the stepper motor isn't turning at all, then you've got problems with potentially electronics, which brings us on to issue number three. Electronics issues are generally gonna be down to two things. It could either be power to the stepper motor, which is pretty easy to fix and test. It could be a broken um, stepper motor itself, or it could be a stepper driver. Now, sometimes stepper drivers, especially if you configure them incorrectly in like a rep wrap, they can get overheat, they can get really, really hot, and they can cut themselves out. So do test just by touching, be careful, touch the top of the stepper motor drive and find out if it's hot or is it cutting out for some reason. After that, we're getting into the realms of black magic and the next two things are what you're really hoping to avoid. Thing number three before you go into stripping down the whole head is the software. Have you recently changed slicer? Is the G-code being created in a weird way that isn't putting out extruder code for some reason? Probably not gonna happen, but do check it. And if it does, it'll save you a lot of time because the last thing is what you really wanna avoid. So the final thing that you wanna check is the nozzle itself. Now on the Up Mini 2, they've actually given this little kit and in it is a wrench of some kind. It fits on there. You can undo it and we're gonna have to, if it comes down to it, we're gonna have to soak the thing in acetone, probably burn it on the gas hob try and rod it out with some kind of wire. It's not difficult, but it's time consuming, it's a real pain. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and check the driver gear first. So on the Up Mini 2 um, print head, there's two screws here and a fan cable. Unplug the fan cable, remove the two screws, and then what you should be able to do is grab hold of the entire stepper motor unit by the injection molded um, unit here and that should pull out. Right, so fingers crossed, we're gonna see a blocked unit here. So here we've got, so here we've got the gear itself. So let's try Allen key, see if we can get in there. Let's have a look in there. Hmm doesn't seem to be a huge amount in there to be honest. So we're gonna check something that I didn't mention, we just check that there's a clear path through, there's nothing weirdly blocking the, uh, the path of the filament. And there doesn't seem to be, that looks very clean and sometimes you can get really, really worn teeth. Um, this is pretty much brand new and they're dead sharp. So I'm also gonna check that there's nothing like cables that have come unplugged or maybe loose connections, none of that. Hmm, could it be something more sinister? Okay, what I've done now is I've heated it up and I'm gonna take the nozzle off. Don't take the nozzle off without heating it up first. So. Let's take this thing off and we're going to replace it with one of the nozzles that comes with the pack. Okay, so this thing's cooled down now, so we're just going to try this fresh nozzle. And we want to get it nice and tight because that can be a cause of sadness later on. 
I think we'll do at this point is we will put back the guide with the little roller there and we'll try and do an extrude on the machine with the cover off to see if the stepper motor is actually moving. Okay now, so I've hooked up the, um, the extruder head to the 3D printer. I preheated it, so this is absolutely red hot now. Um, so I should just be able to press extrude and hopefully this gear will, uh, will start turning. So, extrude. And we've got no movement. Hmm. Let's have another check of everything. Okay, so I've checked everything's uh, connected up properly. I'll press that extrude button once again. I'm getting nothing. Retract. If you're going through the same stage as me, then you definitely want to be checking that the uh, the extruded temperature's up to uh, to max because sometimes some softwares have uh, cutouts whereby you can't actuate the extruder um, without it being hot. That's just to prevent damage to the nozzle and the whole drivetrain. In this case, it looks like we've got some kind of issue because there's no movement there. Okay, so that's a bummer. It's not the extruder gear. It's not the nozzle. Stepper motors just don't break, in my experience. There's not really a lot that can uh, go wrong with them. So, it's probably not the stepper motor, although I do have a spare, so I will try that one. Which puts us in the extremely strange world. That's a witch's hat to signify black magic. Electronics and software. Software is a problem, because this isn't rep wrap. This is an enclosed system and I'm starting to pay the price already. So if it's software, I'm screwed. If it's some kind of glitch between my particular setup, I've basically got no way of troubleshooting it. If it's electronics, there's still a little bit of hope yet and I'm gonna start by checking the basics. So if you're anything like me, you like things that are real, that move, that have gears and pulleys, and bearings, everything that's right and good in the world. However, sometimes we're forced to deal with the dark side, and that's electronics, where we, things that are wrong, you can't actually see. But I like to start with the things that you can actually see, which are connections. Now, I know that the nozzle was heating up, it was doing the nozzle height calibration, which is what I'm guessing all this kind of carry on is. That is actually connected up here, so we've got probably positive and negative for the, uh, for the cartridge and we've probably got some kind of gubbins which there we go there's two wires for the thermistor which is doing heat sensing so the nozzle height calibration is done entirely on the hot end right we've got this thing that is this plug so we don't worry about that next we have lovely if not slightly pointless LED light. So two cables, this thing definitely worked so it's not a malfunction with this, which go to this, which leaves one other thing, which is the stepper cables. So they look in pretty good nick, there's no bare wires, it was really really tight in there. And this is why I'm actually going to check the stepper cable, just to check that there's nothing, you know, maybe there's a broken link in it, or there's some kind of loose connection in there, and the sort of pin connectors. But that looks basically fine. So next thing, all this plugs into this interface board. Um, let's check the soldering. And... It looks pretty good actually. Let's see if we can zoom in on that. That's good. That's wave soldered. That isn't done by some poor individual in a sweatshop somewhere. That is machine done and it's good. That is good soldering. 
Here we've got some kind of what looks to be MOSFET or something. JUC 31F. I'm just going to look that up. Right, a very quick Google that has found that this is a packaged bimetallic thermostat, which is very nice. But critically, absolutely nothing to do with stepper motor. This witchcraft here is all to do with the heat cartridge and the whole sensing package of the heat. So, if everything's okay here, the stepper motor's probably fine. Then the only things left are the electronics in the machine itself, which is entirely closed, or the software. But that seems to be a stable release. So, unless I've somehow jiggled something about by loosening this cable out, then the problem, it would seem, is to be in the electronics in the printer itself, which is a major bummer because that means sending it back to manufacturer and I'm in defeat. I'm hit the extruder mode. Still getting nothing. So it doesn't appear to be the wire. Let's change the stepper. Well, that's it. I'm having to admit defeat. I've gone through my list. I checked my nozzle, no problems there. Electronics, everything seems absolutely fine on the stepper motor board side. There's no problems with wiring, it's a simple board. Everything seems to be working perfectly fine. It's got a um, wave soldered board, so no problems with any of the obvious stuff. Software, I updated the firmware, I've gone through all of the steps, can't see a problem. The stepper motor itself, I've actually swapped out in a great irony for a rep wrap something that is open and maintainable, put it on the machine, run the extrude program, nothing. Check the driver gear, nothing there. So I think it's probably gonna be some kind of issue with the main board or maybe there's something sort of fruity going on. Maybe a software level that I just can't tell. But the thing is, I've tried it off the panel itself. Actually, I can't have tried it from the, um, the software because unlike RepRap there isn't a software ability to extrude. So I'm admitting defeat, I've sent off a support ticket to tier time, let's see what they come back with. Hopefully it will be something simple, I suspect it's going to have to go back there because they'll see this video and they'll think there is nothing else to check. I'm pretty confident of that although I will hold my hands up if I'm wrong. Anyway, if nothing else, that has just shown up the difference between RepRap, something that's open, maintainable, lots of things that you can check, and a closed system where basically, at some point, you've got to wash your hands and say, this isn't my problem anymore. I paid for a warranty. All this is baked into the cost. I've got a, a printer, which is beautiful, but essentially, part of that cost is the support and the warranty of that entire unit. So it hurts me as a maker, someone who thinks of themselves as someone who can fix things, but at this point I'm not doing an autopsy, I'm not stripping it down to the bare bones. The point where it leaves the ribbon cable from the printer extruder end to the main board essentially isn't my problem. And I suppose that in itself is one of the issues with closed systems. Not only does it make it harder for the general population to look after the stuff and take sort of open-minded systems control, but also it takes the will and the motivation away to fix things just because of this fictitious warranty issue. Anyway, we tried, we failed, and we'll see what tier time come back with. But if you like these videos, you like the thoughts and the ideas that go behind them, then do like, subscribe. And if you've got any ideas on how the hell I'm gonna fix this thing, then please do let me know in the comments below. No doubt I've missed something. Anyway, see you next time.